Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about something related to an episode that I did a couple of weeks ago about some uh, adding some water to your scenes. Now, somebody asked me if I could actually animate the water if you were gonna do like some sort of animation with the scene. And so today I'm gonna to give you a couple of options that you can do about that. Let's check it out. Okay, so as you can see over here, uh, this was some of the files that I did for the previous episode. You can check that out uh, on my library. Uh, and it was just pretty much adding uh, some of these to a scene very quickly. And uh, this way there's no really uh, an actual water simulation to your scene. However, um, again, somebody asked me in the comments if I could actually animate it. Um, there's, also, there's a couple of options that you can do. Uh, one of them um, is to actually animate the texture, right? And so for example, this image here, uh, if I go to the texture of it, to the mapping on location, I can actually move the slider, right? You can see that I get a little bit of effect, right? Of water moving there. Now, for example, I could uh, set it up to the lowest here, go to my timeline, right? Frame one. And in here, I'm going to press I to set a keyframe. So that means that I have a keyframe, keyframe here and you can see it over here in here too. So for example, I can move to frame 150 and then I'm going to move the slider of the Y location here all the way down here maybe. And I'm going to press I again to set a keyframe, right? And if I go back, I'm actually going to change the interpolation here. This really doesn't matter. It's just personal preference here to linear. But uh, if I press play, now you can see that the texture is moving. Now, you can maybe move these closer so the animation is a little bit quicker. Right? And you can see a little bit of that. Now, the uh, trick about this method is, even though this is probably the easiest and the... Uh, um, and the less heavy on your scene is that you will gonna need, you're gonna need a tileable texture that you can tile uh, at least on the y axis so you can actually so you can actually duplicate the texture as it goes down and down and down right uh, this one is not tile so it'll be something that you will have to play with right uh, but if it's a, like a really short animation uh, uh, maybe you can sort of uh, you know uh, move that to uh, um, so so you actually um, matches the scene over there. Now, um, that, that would be the easiest, fastest way. Uh, the other way that I actually like is there is, uh, there's a new file here. And if you, um, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same process. However, instead of with a picture, you can actually do this with an actual video. Uh, so you can actually import a video as a plane instead of a, uh, picture and you will have the actual animation in there. And so, for example, I have a couple of videos here, right? So I have something like this and, you know, stuff like this. It's a couple of videos here. And um, I got some of these. At, uh, I have an account at the uh, um, Artlist uh, website. Uh, this is a website that you can do, uh, that you can get music, sound effects, you know, uh, that you buy. And you can put them on your videos and stuff. And there's actually a footage version here that you can pretty much search for any footage and it's pretty much, pretty much like stock footage. And so for example, I can go to waterfall over here and now I'm getting all these nice, uh, you know, options here, right? And um, what I'm looking for for this image is the same, for, for these videos is the same as the images. I wanna have a good contrast between the water and everything else. So for example, this the water is really nice separated from the terrain because it's a dark value. And I can actually I can actually isolate this a little bit easier and better. You know, something like this is great because almost is, you know, the rest of the background is almost black. Um, so that's sort of what I'm looking for. And of course, depending on the scene that I'm working on, the angle of the water is gonna it's gonna matter a lot, right? So, you know, once you get your your uh, videos, uh, you know, you have them sort of like a MP4 uh, file here. Let's go to the file here. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. So image, images explains, right? I'm gonna go to this folder and actually uh, find whichever uh, 
uh, option that you want here. So let's uh, let's actually pick uh, let's pick this one here, right? And of course, you don't see anything because we don't see the texture. But if I go to the um, render here, you can see that I have the plane over here, right? Now I'm gonna open up a new editor down here. I'm gonna bring my timeline. Right, and I'm also gonna open up a shader editor here, right? That way we can play with the textures. Now, if I play the timeline, right? If I just put play, you can see that I'm getting some nice animation there, right? Which is great. But now, how can we separate the water from the rest of the of the environment? And we're gonna do the same process as I did with the image, right? So I'm actually going to Go to my texture here. I'm going to add a transparent BSDF. Let's add that in. I'm going to mix the transparent with the normal texture here. So now I have a mix shader. Transparent goes at the top, principal at the bottom. And for the factor, I'm actually going to use the same uh, video. So I'm going to attach this to the factor. Let's see what that gives me. Nothing too crazy, right? But we're going to tweak this a little bit. So now let's uh, organize this a little bit. I'm going to attach the uh, video to my emission so I can see it a little bit better. Now we're starting to get somewhere. And you can always play, play with the intensity of the, uh, of the emission there, right? And now I want to see if I can actually cut these parts here. Uh, but let's do a color ramp in between the factor, right? And the video, right? And now with the ramp, I can actually control the contrast of this, right? And that way I can clean it up just a little bit. Right? So now we're getting somewhere. Now, the great thing about this is, for example, let's say I don't want this right here, right? Or let's say, for example, that I want to separate the, you know, this waterfall from this one. And I want to treat them separately. Uh, the great thing about this, this is still a plane. So if I go to edit mode, I can grab my knife tool. And let's say, okay, I just want this part here. And I'm actually going to cut this here, right? Now I can go into edit mode and get rid of this plane, right? And now I can separate this too. So I'm just going to select everything, press P by loose parts. And now I have two separate, you know, pieces here. The other great thing about this is that I can actually, let's grab my knife tool and I'm going to cut here. I'm also going to cut here. And this is just an example, uh, just so you can see the uh, the great thing about this being a plane. And I can actually conform the plane to maybe the geometry that I have. Right? So maybe I want to cut here. Now, I wouldn't go too crazy with this part right here, just because, you know, this is sort of treated as a texture. But you can see that I can actually bend this. And, uh, you know, if I had like a scene, I can actually conform the geometry or the waterfall to the geometry that I already have, right? Instead of going forward here, maybe there's a rock underneath it. And then maybe I can have some more water down here and stuff. Uh, but you can see how easily, um, you know, you can you can move this around and uh, and edit it uh, the same way that you do a normal image, right? Um, so here I show you, uh, this is like a little scene that I did. Now, uh, I put this together very quickly. It took me half an hour. Uh, these are some of the uh scans that i already have with some mix of quixel scans as well and i i, I grabbed e, the waterfalls that i already have on a file here so you can see that my waterfall um file here in blender is already set up i just need to grab the plane copy it paste it to the scene 
and um, and I have it set up already here. And I got a couple here. You can see that I got some water force here. I edited some of this, um, and I edited some of here on the uh, on the ground plane. And I have like a little camera animation uh, that I can show you here. So this is the shot here. Sorry, in frame one, and so it goes here. So I have a little bit of animation back here. Some water going down here and here. Now this was done very quickly, right? You could add a little bit of mist going um, from the waterfall into here, maybe some particles. You know, if you have a character walking down here, up here on top of this little um, illuminated area here, uh, you're gonna start putting stuff together to make a, a better looking scene. And this is in Eevee, uh, you probably get better results in cycles, um, but uh, you, you know, just to show you what the capabilities are for, for something like this um, that you can put up very quickly. And uh, and again, this is not very expensive on your scene, right? Um, you would just have to be careful about the, uh, you know, the resolution of the file and the, and the, uh, and how many of these you have. Uh, but this is something that you can just, you know, set up on a uh, collection, turn it off and then turn it on whenever you need it. But, but yeah, so this is my options for anybody that wants some animated water. All right, guys, so that's it for today's episode. Very quickly, I just want to show you and give you some options about having some animated water in your scenes if you're interested in that. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you liked it or not or anything that you would like to know. I'll see you guys in the next one.